surfing, Jay. I see him. I see him. Yes, sir. <laughs> Double Kobe and maybe. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Flamingo, it's it's like for me, it's like wild frontier. I never never go there. I'm hardly ever in that direction. The last time I was there was 10 years ago. It's just a really cool fishery. The diversity is really what stands out to me. And you know, mangrove shorelines, uh, laid down trees, a lot of that I'm very familiar with. But knowing Nestor in particular, as the couple shoes that I've already done with him. The guy, if there's ever a guy that's dialed into a program, it's that guy. It's been known that I'm a little bit of an artificial guy. I love this thing artificial. It's covering a lot of ground. Um, Nestor, he's dialed into a program. And when you're on the same boat with a guy and he's gonna be out fishing you, look, I'm all about putting some live bait on. Right to the shoreline. Right to the shoreline. Pop, pop, pause. You pop, pop, pause. Let it, you know, let it slide through. It's almost like, like I've done this. This is <laughs> the only time, the only time I've really done like this done is it. in Louisiana. Where like, Popping corks are the deal. This time of the year, pretty much, um, we got we got a big change in, in water temperature. So yeah, when the water, right. when those cold fronts come in and the water temperature gets cold, we're pretty much fishing channels, deeper water, um, runoffs. Oh, oh, get him! Uh, so when we get that change, um, like I said, the, the, the fish typically run, you know, to deeper water looking for that, that warmer stuff. Um, once it starts to warm up again, the fish kind of, you know, they get happy, they move in shallower, they kind of go back to their everyday routine. And a lot of these shorelines have different points, um, different sections where the current rips and bait gathers up. And like that little snook right there, you know, he's just waiting on his little section of the mangrove tree there looking for, for, for food to pull by. Wait, yeah. And because the water's stained, yeah, the popping cord, cord yeah, the popping get cord attention. gets them, you know, their attention. You know, it's amazing is that little snook is all how really white it is compared yeah. to what I catch. Yeah, I feel like ours are a little darker, a little more stained. Yeah. Well, this is definitely the right start. I mean, it's desired species. That's a that's the target species for the morning. That's for sure. You know, we're gonna catch a couple small to medium sized snooks, and we'll we'll switch it up a little later on. And do a little maybe tail. maybe left for this fog to burn off a little bit. Yeah, we need this <laughs> fog to burn off a little bit. That's for sure. Like I said, the water's so dirty. You know, for the most part, you know that that popping noise up top is yeah. what you know attracts yeah. them. That's why when you were asking me about artificials, you know, you will catch them artificials, but you know you they're like not. How they go see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. That one caught me a little off guard. I don't know if you saw it, but my shrimp just popped out of the water there. Oh, well, that's good, right? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, all right. Going around. Nestor wanted to fish the backcountry for snow because one, we had the higher water with the tide dropping out. Also, it was crazy foggy. And we know some of that near shore stuff we were gonna do, we we're gonna have to be running in that open water, which can be a little sketchy sometimes. So spending an hour and a half or so in the back country while that fog was burning off was an opportunity to catch some snook. Um, maybe not the giants that everybody would hope for, but we were still pulling on them pretty regularly. And as any angler, you all you can hope for is a couple bites. And that's exactly what we were getting. And you know, to be honest, it was cool throwing a popping cork. I don't get to do it often enough, and it still brings me back to when I was a kid. You throw that cork up on shoreline and click clack, and the cork says go under, and you got a fish. <laughs> 
I'm fixing to get a bite right underneath that, that little stump that's coming out. Come on, right now it should be a bite. There you go. <laughs> Got him. This feels a little better. Oh, watch the troll of butter. <laughs> watch the troll of <laughs> Oh, God, this is going to be bad. <laughs> He's going to be bad. Oh, go, go on. Look at that. That's, that's total control right there. Look at that. That's a little better, Snook. <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Oh, man. I ain't going to lie, Will. We almost lost this one on the camera boat. <laughs> a little better fish. Yeah. Um, so I hooked him over here, but he's got <laughs> he's got another hole here. Are you saying we might have caught that fish earlier? I'm saying you might have caught it. In the back country, it was cr still crazy foggy, but just as we break out into the open, sun comes out and it's beautiful. It's light winds. I mean, it's like the perfect type of day to be on that near shore bite. And the, in my mind, I'm thinking just the different opportunities that we could see, you know, in this flat water and no fog. I mean, it, all the things, all those parts that you hope a day comes together, it was starting to happen right there. Got him. You wanna talk a fish that has some armor? That one does have it. Yeah. So now that we got that out of the way, we, they get bigger from here, right? Let's, get, let's go find <laughs> the bigger ones now. Yeah. The traps, you know, for the commercial fishermen, a lot of times will be either just inside or outside the park boundaries. And there'll be miles of trap lines. And you look for the dirtiest trap line you can find. It's really about finding the traps that have kind of an ecosystem around them. There's already grasses hanging on it. There's already maybe even barnacles hanging on the trap itself. Well, the bait fish and the shrimp and small little forage will get into the mix of that grass that's already hanging. And the triple tail, its whole disguise is to look like floating grass. I can't tell you how many times people will blow right past a trap that has a 10 pound triple tail on it and never even know it because they think it's grass. The truth of the matter is, if you went by those a little slower, you probably have an opportunity to some giant triple tail. Jay, let's pull up to this pot, uh, one o'clock. Oh, right here? Uh, the next one up, looks like it has a good one. Oh, so not this one, the next one up. Yeah, I mean, the one you're pointing at does have a fish, but he's on the smaller side. Okay. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, I like it when we're being selective. The one in front of you, 12 o'clock, has, um, has two. It has one medium-sized one and one small one. The one on the, on the right of it has the bigger one. Okay. Wanna go shoot, order that bigger one? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Go for the prize? <laughs> I'll go, go for the win, baby. Go for the win. Is that the small one? That's a, that's a, that's a keeper, though. I think so. Uh, I, I don't know if it... That wasn't I a bad mean, one. Wasn't a bad one, but I, I, that other one that's shining at me is a little bit bigger. I'm gonna get him right here. Got him! Got him! Yeah. So that's being a little selective, right? 
Yeah. I pulled it away from the little one, threw it back out there and got this one. Oh yeah. Oh, he's not happy about it either. <laughs> that other one, maybe the same size. I think so. If not a skosh bigger than this. running this trap line catching triple tail i mean to the point there was a couple times we didn't even jump back on plane to look for another trap we just idled to the next one and there'd be some triple tail there but come to find out this was all nester's plan to run the same trap because it ended in the next opportunity and the whole time i know now that i think about it his whole game plan was like oh we're just gonna catch triple tail up to this point and then I got a little bit of surprise for him. I, I'm pretty sure that he had him named by the time we got there. Colby's on the surface, Colby's on the surface, Colby's on the surface, Jay. One o'clock. Oh, I see him, I see him. I see him coming right at us. See, oh, he's got it right here. He's going to intersect it. He just ate it, he just ate it. <laughs> Where did it go? There's two behind me, Jay. Two behind you. Two behind me. I'll just keep on this. I'll wait until they come up close. They're just free swimming on the surface. Love it. Jay, you want to grab the rod so I can get down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Come on. Well done. We got those are just in the in the live oil back there. Come on. Where's your buddies? Where's your buddies? All right, so um, the real question is, what do you want to do with him? Uh, you don't uh, have a net? A net, yes, I do have a net. In most cases, boating a green Kobe is maybe not ideal. And, and also, I'll second that with, maybe it's best to probably have a gaff. If you plan to keep it, it's probably a good idea to have a gaff of which I did not have my gaff in the boat. The boat's fairly new. I've been fishing back country, not one thought of bringing a gaff on the boat. It's my redfish net. <laughs> it's, it's my redfish net. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I mean, if I can get his head in here. I feel like we're bringing a knife to a gunfight there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Nope, nope. He sees the net every time. Look at that. Look at that. He swam right into it. <laughs> Look at it. All right, coming in. Watch, watch your feet. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Nestor. Look at that joker. God. All right, just watch your toes there. <laughs> Nestor's very first cast, he sticks one. And uh, I mean, it's just chaotic at that point. I look on the side imaging. And I see like, I believe to be a bunch of black drum. So I put a crab on, slinging out the side and oh, I, I got bit and we had back to back cobia. Something just ate me. Yep, I just got it. No! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coming up to it right there, cobia. Cobia. Yes, sir. This is the one that I have 20 pound, 25 pound leader on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at that. We were double Kobe and maybe. <laughs> Dude. Hey, nice spot too, man. Almost matches, huh? Yeah. Two nice fish, man. That's awesome. Nestor, I told you it's like 10 years since mm -hmm. I've been here. And when I was here last, I remember it being 
like anything goes. And I, and I understand why you say bring the arsenal, right? Because yeah. when I was here, look at the shark behind the boat. Big bull. Uh, I mean, as I'm talking, the sharks rolling up behind us. But um, but like anything goes, from the back country, snook, yeah. redfish, trouts, to just outside with the triple tail and and now cobias and. And if a guy just rolled out here with a couple of pairs of 4,000s, you know, he's not gonna do a whole lot of damage. He's gonna get his feelings hurt, but I think that's part of the thing about just coming out, as you know, as a guide, yeah. you gotta bring it all, because you yeah. never know what you're gonna run into out here. Exactly, I mean, that's why, you know, when, when you called me to, to do this, I was like, you know what, if we're gonna fish the park and we got good weather, you know, we definitely gotta come out and, uh, and bring everything we got, because, I mean, the variety, you know, of not only the species, you know, just so much to do and styles to fish out here. Yeah, um, no question. You know, that always makes it, you know, always makes it interesting. And we literally just left Triple Tail half a mile that way. As soon as you put the trolling motor down and started coming in, you saw that group of cobia on the surface. It's moving to the right. It's right back here. See it in the back corner? Yeah, I see it out there, man. Could be the sharks. No, 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 Jake, those are the cobias. <laughs> those are the cobias. Okay, so should I bring this one in? Yeah, and go? yeah, bring it in. It's <laughs> like, Jay, it's like nine, ten of them, but big, big school of them. Okay, stand by. <laughs> Let me get this one out of the way. Yeah, nice school of them there. I got the boat turned heading their way, Jay. All right. What do you think about that spot from down here, big guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All I can tell is just like this black spot on there, on the surface. Uh oh. Oh, he's gonna be on you. Yeah, he's on you. Oh, I thought that one was gonna eat it. So did I. You had the big one turn on it. I mean, the, that big one. Did you see the size of that middle fish? Yeah. 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 Got the little one of the group, of course. All right, you want me to spot lock us? Yeah. Let me, you want to come down? Got it. Fighting Kobe one handed, got the other one ready to go in the other. <laughs> oh, well done, sir. Well done. I could de-hooker him, or we can That's bring him. That's the best bet. It's, I think so too. Okay, we got, I think, sharks coming. Yeah, we got, let this guy go so he can have some life, yeah. so they don't eat him. Got him, Jake. Were you on the post? Yep. Yeah. Come on, bring up some friends. Coming down? Oh, you're super, standing on high. the seat? I was super high. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, let me know if he's got a friend. I will. Just watch the crab trap to your right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I just want you to reflect on the idea that I was fixing to re reach down there and grab that joker. <laughs> Maybe we should have netted him. But honestly, I thought it was spent. I mean, you get him close to a boat like that, most time, for at least in my experience, yeah, they they'll eat it on this perimeter. Yeah, yeah. You know they, why they, people are. are yeah, no, definitely. Them. There's always a fine line that they don't feel comfortable in. But that guy just, uh, yeah, he he, uh, he he was comfortable. He he liked the boat color. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Having the opportunity to fish with Nestor, we both get it. We both run Pathfinders. It was just a good relationship early on in, in the whole process of me traveling and doing some episodes with guidelines. Those are the kind of individuals you want to spend some time with. And, you know, for, I, I like to believe that for many years to come, he and I will be spending some time on the bow.